U.S. withdraws troops from Afghanistan following the 20-year occupation. They vacated Afghanistan's Bagram airfield in the night. Even the Afghani soldiers patrolling outside did not know that the U.S. soldiers had left. Since the Biden administration announced that the withdrawal of the U.S. troops in Afghanistan in April of 2021, the Taliban has succeeded in capturing more areas in Afghanistan than before and currently controls one-third of the districts in Afghanistan. We're joined today by Canada's former Minister of Immigration and Canada's first ambassador to Kabul, Chris Alexander, to discuss the recent events in Afghanistan. He has also written a report ending Pakistan's proxy war in Afghanistan. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Can you tell us more about what's currently happening in Afghanistan? Well, yes, it's, it's a sad situation. Uh, in the wake of the U.S. announcement of essentially a, a unilateral withdrawal of its forces together with the small NATO contingent that was there, uh, the Taliban have doubled down on what they were already doing, which was waging war across Afghanistan, seeking to impose a military uh, situation on the country that would bring them back to power. Uh, and they've done this in spite of over 10 years of peace negotiations, major compromises by the Afghan government, by the US. One of their demands had been that uh, foreign forces leave Afghanistan. That's happening ahead of schedule. So there's fighting across the country. Uh, many districts are now, many more districts are now under Taliban control, and even provincial capitals are being threatened. Um, but what is most tragic about this is that it didn't need to happen. The flaw in Western strategy, NATO strategy, and UN um, strategies for Afghanistan from the very beginning has been a failure to appreciate the role of Pakistan's military, the Pakistani state, in backing the Taliban, using the Taliban and its allies, these terrorist groups, as proxies. And so next to nothing has been done to uh, force Pakistan to change that policy. And now with the U.S. Uh, leaving, they see an opportunity to impose uh, their agenda on Afghanistan, which means civil war and conflict on a larger scale. Will they be able to control all of Afghanistan? Uh, I very much doubt it. But is this a recipe for disaster, more displacement, more refugees, uh, more killings of civilians, uh, an end to and disruption of education, particularly for girls? Yes, it is. And so we need to pay very close attention uh, and do much more to bring the solution that is long overdue, which is ending Pakistan's proxy war. Why did the U.S. withdraw Afghanistan in such a hurry? Uh, the answer to that is that cooler heads did not prevail. Most uh, U.S. policymakers who know Afghanistan uh, did not want this to happen. Uh, Joe Biden is a very particular player on the Afghan file. He was against Obama's surge. He's been against the mission for over a decade. I heard this firsthand uh, from him when we met in, uh, in Kabul in early 2009 when he was the vice president-elect. Um, he's a bit of an extremist in wanting to draw down forces. Remember, even Donald Trump promised to bring all the troops home but never did. Um, and so he's not only, in my view, doing the wrong thing um, and, being, and, and giving this opening to Pakistan, but he's actually also creating tension in the U.S. in the foreign policy community that isn't going to go away. Um, you will have seen him today giving a press conference, uh, one of the very few he's had since being sworn in, that was entirely dedicated to uh, Afghanistan. And he's going to be facing uncomfortable questions as the situation there gets worse. Because once again, this does not have to be. Uh, the U.S. has a lot of influence in Pakistan, and they haven't used it. So what, what's your opinion on them leaving all of their weapons? I know they left in a very big hurry. Um, I know that there have been videos of uh, people from this group um, showing off the weapons. What's your opinion on this? Well, it's totally irresponsible uh, to, to leave in the dead of night, as they did from Bagram Air Base, the main uh, hub for U.S. activity in the country over the last 20 years. Uh, it, 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 it is costing the U.S. in terms of its reputation. Uh, I would not say it's 
as bad as Saigon in 1975, but it's it's definitely uh, not a proud chapter in U.S. foreign policy or military history. There should have been, in my view, and I think in the view of, of most of us who served in Afghanistan, a continuing U.S. and NATO presence, uh, and then a much larger political uh a political effort to force Pakistan to change course because it, it, it's only decisions are not made by the Taliban, by their commanders, even by their leadership. Decisions are made by Pakistani military officers uh, and they have not been a focus of international effort to bring peace to Pakistan, They're, uh, to Afghanistan. They're essentially the spoilers at the moment. And so um, leaving all this military equipment behind, leaving these bases, some of which uh, are now being taken over by the Taliban, some of the equipment will go to the Taliban. It just adds to the confusion and chaos uh, that once again did not have to occur. What would your take on the U.S. Army left leaving the airport in the darkness of night and without informing the Afghan security forces? Uh, they claim that it was for operational security. I, my view would be that it was irresponsible and dishonorable. Um, the Afghans are our allies. Um, Joe Biden, Canada, the US and other countries continue to support uh, their fight against the Taliban financially. Uh, you should never treat your allies that way. Speaking of some other countries, what is your opinion of Boris Johnson's announcement of the UK ending their military mission in Afghanistan? Well, I think it's inevitable. Uh, there are no NATO countries, with the possible exception of Turkey, that will be prepared to stay in any significant way without the U.S. being there as the main partner in NATO. Um, but the U.K. has also been part of the failure to be tough on Pakistan. Uh, and I think uh, the U.K. has a particular track record, given their colonial role in South Asia, uh, for more than a century that has been made them more uncritical of Pakistan's, the policies of Pakistan's military than even the United States. So I don't think a UK departure does much to alter the strategic balance. Um, but the fact that NATO and the US are leaving is, is in this untimely, uh, disorderly way is clearly a negative. And the only way to correct this mistake, as far as I'm concerned, is to uh, wheel around and have uh, an absolutely um, united focus on political uh, pressure on Pakistan to change its policy. They are the key to peace. Uh, they are the key to taking Afghanistan out of this agony that it, that, that, that in which it continues to languish. How has the U.S. handled the conflict in Afghanistan to date, including the handling of the withdrawal? Uh, what have they done to succeed and where have they failed? Well, we can't ignore the fact that the U.S. spent 20 years uh, trying to bring peace to Afghanistan. They were the main investors. They were the uh, they provided the lion's share of military force uh, through most of that time. I think they were sincere. But they started to give up on Afghanistan 10 years ago, uh, really when Osama bin Laden was found and killed in Pakistan. They lost interest uh, and the financial crisis and many political uh, events in the United States over the past decade have really undercut public support for this mission. Its, it's objectives are seen as being unclear or, or futile in part because no politician at a senior level has come forward and said the real problem is Pakistan. I think if, if someone said that, the public would understand that that's been the missing uh, ingredient in our strategy all along. Why do you think that the Taliban has remained so persistent in Afghanistan despite 20 years of conflict? Uh, because they have the support of Pakistan's military, one of the largest in Asia, um, it's a country of over 250 million people, and this is their strategic priority. Their strategic priority is covert war, proxy war through the Taliban, the Haqqani group, uh, the Islamic State in the province of Khorasan, and other groups. 
to reconquer it to serve to Pakistan. And this for them is part of a continuing undeclared war against India. If the Taliban are not in power in Kabul, as far as Pakistan's generals uh, see it, then India has too much influence. And so they're fighting what they think, uh, for what they think take to be Pakistan's national interest. Uh, unfortunately, in doing so, they're violating international law, killing civilians, committing atrocities and war crimes, and they should be held to account for all of that. What needs to be done to ensure that Afghanistan does not become a full-fledged terrorist safe haven following the withdrawal of the international troops? We need a mass political effort to sanction Pakistan, to ensure they're designated as a state sponsor of terrorism, and to list them on the Financial Action Task Force blacklist. That's a list of countries that are not recognized as responsible members of the international financial system because there is credible information about money laundering and financing of terrorism taking place in those countries. And Pakistan clearly qualifies. Thank you for discussing this with us, Chris, and thank you to our viewers for watching today's show. This has been Julia Cosby, and you're watching the International News Channel.